Բոլորշացավ մի հայտարարություն թե թեվացեց շատերի վկնած տամոքսները։ Իսկ մի քանի բնորոշ նշաններով ուրվագծվեց անցանկալին, որ պետք է չլինի։ Կարուցվածքային անչուշապելի լրությունը դուր սահեց բաց թողեցին խեղ, չկարկապած այդ գիտակցությունը ունա, չթրով, բարձվեց հոտել էր, հոգնել էր, ու են եսպես լավ էր, էլ չնված ծավոք, պարուրելով ու պարուրելով բարը դուր շպրտելով շատ, չապազան շատ ոգտագործման համար ու թլպատված նվիրված կը դհը այն։ You know, I asked a very dear friend of mine to read one of the pieces that I wrote and tell me honestly what she thought. I didn't tell her I wrote that piece. So she read it and this is what she said. Ես կոմ ինչոր գուգուլաս թարկմանությունը կամ մակրագույն ծնդաբանությունը։ This has either been translated by Google Translate or is pure nonsense. And I found this exchange quite productive because it reminded me how much we're disciplined, non-coercively at first, to translate our non-linear experiences into this linear narrative logic, at the same time, we're taught to naturalize this logic and we start thinking about and processing our experiences and the world around us in these linear terms. And if we come across something articulated in non-linear terms, it throws us off or freaks us out. And it made me think how often we think of difference in relation to our own cultural thinking and behavior in these very terms, be it ethnic difference, class difference, sexual difference. Oh, this last one has been particularly anxiety-triggering in Armenia these days, hasn't it? Or should I say explosive, by Tutsik, pun intended. You know, difference is often talked about in binary oppositions, and when I used to live in Armenia, this discourse of difference along class lines, not necessarily articulated in those terms, you know, worker versus engineer, farmer versus intellectual, was often evoked through particular languages or dialects, signaling allegiance to different centers, provincial, non-provincial, Yerevan, non-Yerevan, Armenian, non-Armenian, and this difference was always figured in relation to this imagined classed ethnic absolutism, which itself shifted as the Soviet Union gently jolted into its collapse and an independent Armenia started to be put together. I don't know if any of you would recall or still hear expressions like may the Kurds in the mountains cough, not you, assuming that all that all Kurds do is tending to livestock in the mountains or around so yezdilini. They look like a yezidi implying a lack of sophisticated taste. This marks one kind of difference, doesn't it? In fact, social scientists call this racialization. But we don't talk about stuff like this, do we? Or do we? These are just inconsequential expressions, not a difference that matters to us. And often, there comes a reaction to the normatively prescribed difference. So for example, if in Yerevan, I would talk about the melodicness of the Lennagan dialect because I love, love, love it, at our summer camp with my Lenagansi peers, I was one of the Tzizak Kardzok Erevan Tziz. And the way I said Jokat instead of Jogat was funny. But later on, there was a kind of difference that I intentionally sought for, the creative and not so creative disassociation from the enforced uniformity of thought, of what it meant to be human, of what it meant to be Armenian, what it meant to be Armenian woman. But these days, most of us know exactly what it means to be an Armenian woman, right? You know, to know one's place in a hetero society and a hetero family, to know how to carry oneself and present one's body, has a chikun, publicly acceptable hair, never gray, unless it is achieved through cutting edge hair fashion technologies, publicly unappealing hair, eliminated, exterminated, gone, declared MIA, missing in action. Wait, we do talk about this stuff in public these days, right? You know, gendered body politic and gender disciplining of citizens. Well, maybe it's not a national security threat quite yet. որ գլուղ նակամակործրեց այս ամենից ու ծողով պատվեց, ու կրտնեց, ու ահագին կաշկործրեց, 
Երկարածան բարություն ասեց կրակն էր ենք էլ իր պարթամ ու ձանձրալի վարսերի ձերքը։ Այդ իսկ պաճարով առաջին իսկ առիտ նոգտագործեց այն առակ սլացող ժամանակի անիվների տակը գծելու։ Բայս նա մորացել էր, բարի լույս սասաց, ինչ լովն եք լսեք, երանի ձեզ ու մի քիչը լինց, որ վայելում եմ ձեր լավությունը։ My experiment with writing has been an attempt at questioning various public discourses at different scales, such as our engagement with each other as different kinds of men and women, various others, our history, our engagement with the physicality and abstraction of time, our own bodies and the various meanings of life, and how all these are interwoven and intersect at different times, in different places, in different ways, in different seasons, impacting each other and rendering our, rendering our life experiences anything but linear, binary, uniform, or absolute. So what is it then that paralyzes us, however we define ourselves, to embrace difference as an enriching, multidimensional, multicentral, non-linear, non-binary, non-tiered, liberating experience? I mean, what is it exactly that we think is at stake for us as Armenians of various genders and sexualities and religions and spiritualities and um, atheists and omnivores and vegetarians and married and unmarried and with children and without, speaking various Armenians and not speaking any at all, hairy and not so hairy, coming from different places, our eye and hair colors ranging from red to violet. That didn't sound right, did it? Let me start over. So, we all have our signature Hayyacher. We all speak the Jishtist Armenian. We all come from the same place. We're all the same. We all have the same gender and sexuality. Something's off. Okay. Okay, okay, got it. So, we're all Christian. We're all hetero. We will or have married Armenians. We all eat chozi chorovats. We honor our dead, I mean our soldiers. And we go out only if we're dressed up, never down. So what is it then that, that we're so anxious to let go of, to be able to embrace the discomfort of the validity of other stories, stories of different femininities, of different masculinities, different ethnocultural stories, basically other kinds of stories? What is it that we're so anxious to lose in letting go of the supremacy of our own story? And I'm aware of the unproblematically and uncritically and always very publicly proposed male-centric anxieties. I should have perhaps used neo-traditions instead. Or should I have dropped the neo part and said tradition since what is it? Tigran the Great, associating ourselves with an empire and complaining about and criticizing imperialism? Or is it Vartan Mamikonyan? I guess our evocations of the Armenian history can get tricky sometimes. You know, we want the expansive power of a non-Christian em emperor and the commitment to a religion we claim represents us as Armenians. And by that, we mean just about a dozen years beyond 1700. In the meantime, as a very astute four-year-old girl pointed out to me, wait a second, where are the girls in this story? So perhaps we should let go of our own kikosutsun at all the various scales, individual, communal, state, translocal, transnational. I hate to break this to you, but the Armenian version of the kikos story is not the only version. And yet, quite importantly, in the Armenian version, a father sends his daughter to get some water because, you know, that's what patriarchs do. And the daughter... Instead of fetching some water from the spring, she sees a tall tree and gets carried away in the whirlpool of what-ifs because you know that's what women do. And of course, it is the father who comes up with the brilliant idea of slaughtering the only food source the family has and invites the community to honor Kikos. The grandson-to-be will have been tragically killed as a result of the family's anxiety over the potential consequences of a potential change. But maybe... This woman just didn't want to get married. 
maybe she had a different perspective on life and on the meaning of life. So what could we do as a differently-minded and like-minded women and men who often find commonality around our own difference to allow for the decolonizing our own minds where being different won't mean reconfiguring into any kind of uniformity and would allow us to embrace difference, albeit with discomfort, instead of slaughtering our only cow or ox. Հրտմություն էր սեպական խոնավությունից մրսեց, ուզեց արևին տալիր բորբոսատությունը գոլոշու տեսքով։ Արև նարոնց կմծիցաղին նայց նրան ու կատարեց իր ամենուրյա սովորական գործը։ Տարակարտության, տար you know, these pieces of abstract prose that I write are photographic snapshots like this of experiences condensed into a few sentences where I'm playing with various literal and metaphoric meanings of words, commenting on and disrupting the ways that words often become employed, used, abused, reused, reduced, recycled to create particular senses of public groupness, exclusionary usness, menkutun, and otherness. And I'm also uh, playing with the word structure, molding parts of speech from other parts of speech to be able to more multidimensionally capture the depth and the denseness of the experiences. Because we don't just experience things one sense at a time. Our experiences are in 4D. For most of us, they are stereo. So in my writing, I'm experimenting with capturing self-reflexive 4D experiences. You know, often in the, in the privacy of our own minds, we think we're alone in our capacity to embrace difference and change, or better yet, we think we're unique. And other unique folks think the same thing. But there is something about groupness. So perhaps we should talk to each other. This is my story of difference, and would love to hear yours. Thank you.